All right, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Kurt, and welcome back to Walt Disney Landers. Hope you guys have been having a good time, hope you guys have been enjoying your stay this far, and hope you guys are staying safe. This is week number three of my Joy-Con drifting. <laughs> this is week number three of the DDL, our doubles Wi-Fi Draft League. Uh, and this week, we're taking on Ally Switch is Payne, coach of the Phoenix Phantoms. Uh, Phantoms, not Phantoms, Phantoms. Get, fuck you, it's stupid. I Hands are not on them. Hate Joy Con Drift. Uh, yeah, coach of the Phoenix Phantoms. Uh, so if you guys are excited for today's VGC Wi-Fi battle, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe button as well as we are on the road to 200 if we have not hit it already. So let's get into it. So last week we did take an unfortunate L, but you know, I, <laughs> you know, I gotta ignore that. Uh, you know, it is what it is. Still learning. We still took a, uh, a nice dub week one. So we'll try and bounce back here against Ally Switch. But unfortunately, their team is very strong. And uh, they have a lot of threats and a lot of things that are very scary. So we have to bring a, we have to bring a special team member out the back. You guys can see on your screen. We bring a special team member making his debut today uh, that I'm very, very excited for. So let's not waste some time. Let's just get into the team. So the Phoenix Phantoms consist of the... <laughs> I hate myself in anything when I do that. Consist of the Dragapult, Terrakion, Primarina, Volcarona, Tapu Bulu, Gothitelle, Hitmontop, Snorlax, Bronzong, Rotom Fan, and Sandaconda. So, this team, there's a lot of scary things on this team right off rip. Um, Dragapult, if you guys, obviously in singles, Dragapult, very good Pokemon. It's phenomenal, probably the best Pokemon in draft format. Doubles, still very good, but it actually has a lot more niches. First being Ally Switch, which is ironic if we're playing Ally Switch as Pain, it gets Ally Switch. The second goes hand in hand with uh, their second Pokemon, which is Terrakion. Terrakion, Cobalion, Rizion, uh, all three of the Swords of Justice, um, and other stuff that gets justified. Uh, beat up is a common strategy in doubles where basically you bring a Pokemon with beat up and since you have four Pokemon it hits four times and every time you get hit by a dark type move with justified you get an attack raise. So this is basically just giving Trachyon a free plus a free plus four in exchange for Dragapult's turn. So that's terrifying. We need to deal with that. Uh, Primarina very scary. Both D-Max and just regular Primarina are both very scary. Uh, Volcarona gets Rage Powder. It's not gonna be like the Quiver Dancing stuff you really see in singles. Uh, it's more so of like a Rage Powdery kind of bulky nuisance. We were actually considering drafting Volcarona over Talonflame, but we wanted the Tailwind option from Talonflame, which hindsight, looking back at it, Volcarona was probably the better pickup for our team, but it's a learning experience, so leave me alone. Um, next up, Tabu Bulu. Not fully sure what it does other than just what it normally does in singles, so I'm just gonna assume it does the same thing. Uh, Gothitelle getting trapping stuff, it gets Trick Room, it gets annoying shit like Charm. Um, I know from like Ubers, it used to run like Charm sets. So it can be really annoying with uh, stat drops and just trapping a Pokemon in general and just being a nuisance because Psychic types are very annoying for our team, I've realized. Uh, Hitmon Top gets a lot of uh, Fake Out and Sucker Punch and lots of priority like that. It also gets Intimidate for our attackers, our physical attackers. Um, and then just like close combat and stuff, Rock Slide for Talon Flame and what have you. Uh, Snorlax can Belly Drum and Gigantamax and ruin just about everybody because it's so fat that it can Belly Drum and then Gigantamax and then uh, it not take any damage from anything, so that's really scary, we gotta prepare for that. Bronzong, another Trick Room shenanigans, um, can definitely be a nuisance instead of Trick Room for Gothitelle or Gothitelle can set up Trick Room for it to be a nuisance because actually offensive Bronzong kind of nice against our team, not gonna lie. Uh, Rotom Fan, big fan. And then Sandaconda, I don't know what Sandaconda does either. I'm going to assume nothing against my team. So we're not gonna worry about Rotom Fan and Sandaconda. So that's my executive decision. So let's get into our team we're rocking out with. So first up, I have my Joy-Cons backwards. First up, we are rocking out with Jungle Book, our Rillaboom, with Grassy Glide, Acrobatics, Protect, and Superpower. So the idea with this set is we are going to pop our weakness policy off of our Talon Flame. So the idea here is we're going to not have Joy-Con Drift. <laughs> we are going to Gigantamax and then we are going to, um, so the, the, the ideal situation, right, is we lead this plus Talonflame, turn one, we click Protect into this clicking Tailwind. The second turn, we click Peck into our Rillaboom, popping our Weakness Policy, which it, Peck won't do a whole lot of damage, but we are still weak to it. Pop our Weakness Policy, and then we get free plus two, and at plus two, max drum, bang, 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 bang move, uh, pretty much just Oko's everything on our opponent's team. Uh, Acrobatics is there for the Volcarona, the Tapu Bulu, the Hitmontop, stuff that the drum beating won't Oko. Um, and the Superpower is there for the Snorlax, just as an out, because Snorlax is super, super scary. We cannot mess around with that. Uh, so if we're in regular form, we still have Superpower to deal with the Snorlax. 
pairing with that is Iago our Talon Flame with the safety goggle, so we cannot get redirected because if the Volcarona goes for a Rage Powder and then takes the Peck for away from us, that kind of deviates our whole plan. So we need to have safety goggles to ignore Rage Powder uh, from uh, from Rage Powder taking our our thing away. My screen just bugged. I'm going to be right back. All right, so our next mon is Figaro, our Alolan Persian, our Kit E with Snarl, Taunt, Charm, and Fake Out, rocking out with Dayberry because he he likes the little uh, little snack mid game. Uh, so Snarl is there to punish stuff like Dragapult, Primarina, Gothitelle. If it wants to call mine, we can Snarl and just lower special attack, so it doesn't actually get anywhere. It just gets more annoying. Uh, to compare to. Combined with that, we also have Taunt for stuff like Gothitelle and Bronzong, and primarily the Snorlax Big Belly Drum. We have Charm for the Terrakion because we are faster, so if like, if our opponent leads drag up Terrakion, and then we can just click Charm on the Terrakion, so at least we get rid of plus four turns into plus two. It's better than anything else that Persian can do, that which is click Snarl and give it another attack boost, so at least it's not completely useless against Terrakion, I guess. And then Fake Out is there to uh, flinch, get get that nice turn one flinch, fake something out, and potentially kill something next to it. Um, pairing with Figaro, we have Mushu, our Naga with the Choice Scarf, with Sludge Bomb, Draco Meteor, Heat Wave, and Snarl. This is uh, one of our countermeasures to that Dragapult um, Terrakion lead, so the idea here is we are Scarf to outspeed Dragapult, and we blow back Dragapult with a Draco Meteor turn one, unless they are Sash Dragapult, to guarantee get the beat up off, which is good. Uh, I guess it's it's good for them, but I think we always double attack into that Dragapult slot, just to make sure it goes down. Um, if we're something like Cat and Mushu, we kind of have to click Snarl and Draco, um, just to guarantee we get rid of that... Um, that Dragapult, but if he's not, dra uh, it dies 100% of the time to Draco Meteor unless they're Habon Berry, that's another way, but I really doubt that. So uh, that is a countermeasure to that. We have Sludge Bomb, which is actually really spammable against their team once we get rid of the Bronzong and the Dragapult. Looks very spammable against their team. Heat Wave is there just as for like Blue and Bronzong, just kind of like a, a respect measure. And then Snarl in case it's a last minute, like Dragapult and Ether. Um, not gonna Del needs to die against Bronzong and Goth Shell or Dragapult, or whatever, just to lower some special attack to uh, really punish them. So we're moving again. <laughs> Next up, making his debut, we have Sherwood, our Tangrowth with the wide lens with Rage Powder, Giga Drain, Rock Slide, and Sleep Powder. This is a huge counter precaution against that Terrakion lead. We are really scared of Terrakion because it, that thing can literally just claim the game turn one. Uh, if we let it get out of hand. So we have our own Rage Powder to take the beat up to our Tangrowth so it doesn't go into um, the Terrakion. So then something next to us can kill the Terrakion or kill the Dragapult. So then we don't have to worry about it. Uh, Giga Drain is there to actually do damage to the Terrakion if, you know, we have to. Rock Slide is there for stuff like Volcarona. Um, yeah, pretty much Volcarona. That's about it. <laughs> and then Sleep Powder is there to put things to sleep. We can put that Terrakion to sleep. If we could put a Primarina to sleep. If we could put a Volcarona, a Gothitelle, yeah, uh, a Snorlax. This is the main one. Is mainly putting that Snorlax to sleep because uh, we really don't have counter for countermeasure against Snorlax with the Tangrowth here. So if we put the Snorlax to sleep, its Belly Drum becomes null and void until we kill it. So um, we're rocking the wide lens because we don't miss out here with the Sleep Powder wide lens. We are definitely never gonna miss. Uh, hopefully. Hopefully, I think it makes it like an 80% chance to hit. So hopefully, we never have to miss our sleep powders when we need our boy to come through. And last but not least, we have Mufasa, our Landorus, with the Earthquake, Rock Slide, Payback, and Fly with the Focus Sash. So this is another countermeasure, I guess. Um, also just really good because there's a lot of things that could blow back um, Landorus, stuff like Primarina, Terrakion, Bulu, uh, Snorlax at plus six, Dragapult with Hydro Pump. Uh, just really nice sash to uh, guarantee take a hit and fight back some big damage. We have Earthquake, Rock Slide, Payback, and Fly. This is a Dynamax moveset. Earthquake, just very spammable. Stab Landers, as is Fly, to give us a speed boost. Rock Slide is there for stuff like the Volcarona, because Fly doesn't guarantee to Oko the Volcarona, but Rock Slide does, uh, also for the Run fan. And then Payback is there for the Bronzong, because once we Dynamax up, we really cannot touch Bronzong with this set. So at least Payback gives us a Max Darkness. And then we have the Payback for when we're in regular Landers form to hit that Bronzong for at least some sort of damage in comparison to rock slide and fly so that is our squad we're rocking out with against um ally switch is pain and the uh phoenix phantom so i'm not super confident in this one i'm not gonna lie their team is very very scary and i'm definitely very very nervous but hopefully we can pick up a dub and uh get back on track to our winning streak so with that we're gonna go get connected and we will be right back all right so i gotta chime in here before the battle starts because this battle has a little bit of explaining to do so if you guys don't want to get spoiled for the battles there'll be a timestamp on the screen of when i stop rambling um but if you do want to listen in 
I'm going to spoil the video in about three, two, one. So we end up losing the battles this week. And the reason I say that is because we only end up playing one battle in this video. And obviously, uh, VGC is best of three, so why would you only play one battle? Well, we actually ended up taking a game one forfeit loss, which uh, was super annoying and super unfortunate. But the story behind it is, um, so I scheduled my opponent, and I said, hey, you want to play? Um, we schedule Friday, and I said, hey, you want to play at 7 my time? I'm CST, he's MST, so I said, hey, you want to play at 7 my time? And he says, can we do later? Can we do 8 your time? And I said, yeah, that's fine. I'll be around all night. So we schedule for Friday at 8 my time, and I think nothing of it. So I get my team gen from the mids, from mids bot, and I think nothing of it. And we go to connect to the game, and the Nagana Dell is giving me issues. And I wasn't actually sure why. Um, obviously, if I get it through trade through the bot, it's legal. It's not. It can't trade me an illegal Pokemon. So that's what really confused me. Is I got the bot through the Genning bot, or I got them on through the Genning bot, and it was legal. So I wasn't sure what was going on. So I'm sitting there trying to figure it out, and it's giving me issues. It's not letting me go into the game. It says it's not battle ready, which I'm a singles player. I don't know what the fuck that means. Uh, turns out all your Pokemon have to be bred in the uh, Sword and Shield region. Everything has to be from that game. Nothing can be transferred through. What I failed to know is that you actually can't get Shiny Nagan Adele in Pokemon Sword and Shield. You have to get it through other means, as in transfer from Pokemon Home, from Pokemon Sun and Moon, what have you. Um, I didn't know this. I didn't know everything. I, f I didn't really think about it. Um, but obviously, I don't. I gen my teams. I don't have time to sit down and breed and do shit like that. Um, I know they made it a lot easier in Gen 8 to like get battle-ready Pokemon and stuff. But I just simply don't have the time. Do videos almost every day. And believe it or not, I actually do things outside of YouTube. Uh, I know it's very hard to believe, but I actually do stuff. Um, I'm not just sitting at my computer all day, even though that's 98% of what I do. <laughs> I actually do other stuff. I have family and I have friends and stuff. So um, I don't have time to just sit down and breed a team every week for VGC when I'm getting teams gen for every other league. Like I'm in four leagues at the moment. You guys see three of them. Um, I'm in another showdown league as well. And then... Obviously, I do commissioner work for multiple leagues, and I got video work, and I got a whole bunch of shit. So obviously, I don't have time to just sit down and braid a team from scratch. So I ain't like that. Gen my teams. Sue me. So I didn't know that VGC forced that rule. I'm new to this whole shit. I didn't know it. So go into it. It's giving me issues, and I'm like, bro, I don't know what's going on. Um, my friend's going to try and help me figure it out, but like, I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on. And homeboy pulls up with... You better figure it out or I'm taking game one forfeit because this is not my problem. And I'm I'm literally sitting there in shock. I'm like, this dude actually just said that. I was like, all right, bro. This shit was, it's not my fault. I apologize to you. Like, it, I did not intend to stall time like this. Um, I gained nothing out of it. It's just the mon's giving me issues. My bad. And homeboy was pissed. Because uh, what my opponent failed to tell me was that he had somewhere to be. And I didn't know this. And I figured he didn't have anywhere to be, because why would you ask for a later time if you have somewhere to be? Why would you give yourself less time? So I feel like that was just poor scheduling on my opponent's part, but that's not my business. Um, so I, I'm in call with OG Albina, Jesse504, and Mid Pokey Master. Uh, Mid obviously knows everything about Jenning. He's the Jenning bot guy. Uh, 504 is really good with VGC, and Owen is just, he was there, and he's very good at Jenning and stuff. So he gen me the Mon. We were sitting there in call, trying to uh, theory mon and figure out why it was uh, troubleshoot what was going on. We figured out the rule, because I didn't know that, but 504 did. Um, and we figured out that Shiny couldn't be obtained legally. So Owen gen me a regular Noggin Adele and passed it to me. And we got into the game. And by that point, my opponent already wanted the game one forfeit. So I said, you can have it. Fine. Whatever. Um, gave it to him. The admins said, whatever, go ahead. Uh, so homeboy took game one forfeit win. And then we obviously lose the second game. So we lose 2-0 to our opponent this week um am i a little annoyed with it yes um especially because this is very for fun and very chill and i feel like it i feel like i'm not entirely at fault here um it's something that i didn't know i'm very new to vgc is something i didn't know so it's like you can't you can hold blame on me yes and i will accept blame that i should have checked it beforehand and i should have taken initiative to make sure my shit was legal but from my standpoint i'm used to if it's legal on showdown and it gets through the bot why would it not be legal you know so from my standpoint everything made sense but it was a rule i was unclear of 
and it, I apologize for it many times to both the admins and my opponent. My opponent was very upset about it, though, and uh, at the end of the day, it is what it is. So uh, that's that. Uh, am I a little bit bitter? Eh, whatever. And at the end of the day, it's not going to change anything about my life. So I guess it's just it is what it is. It's frustrating in the moment, but in a year from now, I'm probably going to forget about this battle entirely. So with that, that's kind of just like the little uh, intro piece I had to put in here as well. So sorry for the shorter video. Shardy, uh, Shardy, sorry for uh, kind of interrupting the flow of things, but this had to be said because uh, obviously the video would make a whole lot of sense then. So with that, you guys, I'm going to transition you guys into the battle, and um, if you, we'll be back, we'll be back normal for uh, next week. So. so also, I apologize if sound tilted. It took like an hour to troubleshoot all that shit and get them on regen, and it was very frustrating dealing with all that shit. So my apologies for this kind of scuffed video this week, but it is what it is. We'll be back next week with a uh, spoiler alert. It's a really good set, so you guys definitely want to tune in next week if you guys have been enjoying the VGC shit. And uh, I'm hopping out of here. So until next time, peace. I'm out. All right, we're finally back. Uh, long ass fucking ginning issue. Love VGC. Phenomenal format. Uh, I'm so not used to this bullshit. Dragapult, Tracheon, uh, Volcarona, Snorlax, hit on top bronze. Like, this is almost what J Bear brought. Like almost with T. So uh, we're just gonna go. We're just gonna go Naga Tangrowth like we did. Uh, like the game plan. In the back, I think Tang Talonflame is fine to win it if we kill the Dragapult like plan turn one then we um if we kill Dragapult one as planned Terrakion isn't too scary to us and then Rillaboom can just win the game so we're just gonna we're gonna rock it with that we're just gonna go for it uh and we'll see what happens so Volcarona Snorlax could be annoying for this lead I guess because if he raped powder belly drums how do I get around that Um, grass type isn't affected, so I just click Sludge Bomb onto, or I just click Draco into the Volcarona, and then I click Sleep Powder into the Snorlax. So unless he's Lum, then turn one should be fine against that lead. If it's Bronzong TR, then I just put the Bronzong to sleep, I think. But I don't know what he's TRing, unless he's just trying to off, well, I guess Bronzong Snorlax would be his TR. So then do I stop Belly Drum, or do I stop, I stop the Belly Drum just with Heat Wave, I think. I think that's my best plan of attack. So yeah, let's rock out with it. Nervous, but I, you know, this week didn't go as poorly as the other weeks did in mock, so we have a plan. Bronzong Dragapult. All right. All right. This one's interesting. Um, these are two parts of something I didn't expect. Did be weakness policy beat up on this? No, that's not. That'd be crazy. Probably, uh, probably TR ally switch, if I had to guess. Probably TR ally switch to prevent me from Dracoing into the Dragapult. So I could Snarl, lower the special attack. We'll clear body. I could Draco into it if he... I could just um, Draco Sleep Powder into the Dragapult spot. Because worst case scenario, if he ally switches, the Bronzong still gets put to sleep. So we're going to do that. We're going to do that. If we kill the Dragapult, the Sleep Powder goes into Bronzong. If the ally switches, we kill it, we... Yeah, okay. So Trick Room won't go up, given we hit the Sleep Powder. Which is fine by me. Which is fine by me. Draco goes out. Um, this is going to bounce off of this, but it's fine. That just does decent chunks. We'll take that, and we Sleep Powder into... I guess I should have Snarled, but whatever. Um, and then Sleep Powder goes off. We missed anyways. Alright. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> Let's go, bro. Let's fucking go. <laughs> so Bronzong can't Oko either of us. I could Rage Powder Draco into the Draga. I could also Sleep Powder into the Draga. Mm. I don't want to Dynamax this because I got to keep it for Rillaboom. I could just Draco into Draga, Draga and then Sleep Powder. I could just do the same play again. Because what happens? He kills my Naga. That's annoying, but it's whatever. Um, I think that's my play. Because I'm not overly scared of Bronzong. I could also sleep Bronzong. No, I'm not scared of it. I'm not scared of it. I'm more scared of Dragapult. Just ally switching around. Psychic into... Oh, oh into Tangrowth. Okay. So they double into Tangrowth, I think. Sleep Powder lands on the Dragapult. So we don't even have to worry about it attacking us. 
we do live another psychic from the bronze zone with our Tangrowth, so we're fine there. Um, Draco goes out. I missed that too. Nice. Let's go. Um, so psychic comes out. Psychic comes out. I could. What could I do here? Not a whole lot. I could double sleep. I could just drag. I could just drag going to Dragapult. I could just Draco into Dragapult, and I can Rage Powder to guarantee the attack goes into my Naga. Or doesn't go into my Naga. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. I think he's going to attack into the Tangrowth anyways. Dynamax the Pult. Dynamax the Pult to keep it alive? No, Dynamax Zong. Alright. This is something I didn't see at all. All right. Um, Max Mindstorm comes out, so that's cool. Tangrowth goes down, but it's fine. Because I still get the Draco off into Draga. Max Mindstorm comes out into Tangrowth. Tangrowth will die. That's fine. Draco comes out into the Dragapult. If I go Rillaboom and... Max mind or uh, Max Guard. Can Max Guard turn one. Draco comes out onto the Dragapult. This won't kill, but it'll do a lot. You see, he's not Haban. Yeah, he just barely lives, but we'll kill it next turn. Um, as he probably picks off. Oh, he's Citrus. Okay. Citrus Dragapult. Um. Probably, I can just go Rillaboom and click. I can go Rillaboom and click Max Guard. And then I can Grassy Glide the following turn. Because Talonflame will just die, which doesn't get me anywhere. So I think I have to go Rillaboom and Max Guard and then take the hit the following turn. And with. With um with Talon Flames thing still intact, I can still get my weakness weakness policy off and blow back bronze on next turn. So I just wanna see. Yeah, two turns of trick room. So I have to max guard Draco here. I have to max guard, and then next turn I can go uh I can go peck into max glide, kill the bronze on, and then hopefully be in a winning position with Rillaboom. Hopefully. I think. Hopefully. Go off. This thing looks sick as fuck. Big drums. Um, I should have nickname didn't save on this either. That's um, that's annoying. Whatever. Uh Max Guard. Probably Max Mindstorm. Into Naga. Okay. That's fine. Naga goes down. That's fine. Dragapult's still asleep. That's whatever. Psychic Terrain goes up, but I think Talonflame isn't affected because it's flying. I think that's how that works. I think that's how that works, at least. So, here's my thing. Do I... Do I peck? Do I peck into the Rillaboom to give me the weakness policy? Or do I Tailwind so that way once the Trick Room is gone, Rillaboom is faster than anything he could send out? I feel like, hmm. I feel like I can just peck Airstream into the Dragapult. I feel like I can just peck Airstream into the Dragapult. Get the speed boost that way. Because Talonflame's gonna go down this turn. I'm confident in it. So I gotta make my turn count. So if I get the weakness policy, then at least I'm set up for next turn. Yeah, one turn of Trick Room. So I think I have to peck into Rillaboom and max airstream into the dragapult to give me that KO and the speed boost next turn. Whatever Bronzong will do, it'll hurt, but it'll we should take it just fine. And then hopefully be able to clean up with Rillaboom. Hopefully. Into the ally switch. Alright. That's slightly annoying, but whatever. Peck into Rillaboom. Bounces. Weakness policy pops. Um, yeah, that's annoying, but whatever. 
Max Mindstorm into my Talon Flame. Yep. This should die. Nope, we live. Alright. So we actually do get a second hit off next turn. Which is fine with me. We max into the Bronzong. Trick Room goes away here. Trick Room goes away. So... Rillaboom is now the fastest thing on the field. The issue is I have to kill... I have to kill the Dragapult. I have to kill the Dragapult, I think. Do I have to kill the Dragapult? Or I just kill Zong? I think I kill Dragapult. Oh, I can't let Trick Room go back up. I can't let Trick Room go back up. I could taunt into the Bronzong and kill Dragapult. What if they're Mental Herb? I think I just double into Pult. No, I... Talonflame into Pult. Rillaboom into Zong. We are, we are faster than the thing, so this might die. Yeah, Dragapult, we pick up the double knockout this turn. So we have that going for us, at least. Talonflame's alive, so we can still set up a last-minute um, Tailwind. This'll drop. So now it's what what do they have in the back that would be of threat to us. We still have one more turn of Rillaboom doing Rillaboom things. Oh, fuck. Grass doesn't reset the terrain, though. Shit. Shit, that's bad. Snorlax. If it's Snorlax Terrakiana, I might lose. <laughs> Snorlax Volcarona. Okay. Okay, okay. Um, nope, we're fine. We're fine here. Oh, I thought I had one more turn. Shit, we're not fine. We are not fine. Thought I had one more turn. Fuck. So, I have to... If they Rage Powder Belly Drum... Well, that's not going to matter to us. I can just Brave Bird into the Volcarona. I have to double in the Volcarona and hope Rillaboom just lives a hit from Snorlax. Yeah. I have to double into Volcarona because if it's Sash, we're in trouble. If it's Sash and it kills Rillaboom, we lose. Ah, <sighs> protect. Uh. If it was Sash, if it was Sash, we lost. So I had to double into it. I could have killed Snorlax there. Ice Punch into Rillaboom. No, into Talent Flame. Damn. So I have to what? Bank on it not being Sash? Yeah, I think I have to bank on it not being Sash because I don't see how else I win this. Yeah, I think I bank on it not being Sash. I think I just have to hope. Acrobatics. It's Sash. Yep. Oh well. Uh, so that's GG's. But whatever. Miss? No, no. Nope. Unlucky. Unlucky. No vengeance. Uh, GG's. That's about it. <laughs> we got a little bit unfortunate in the game, but it's whatever. So, GG's. Uh, that's been week three of GDL. And uh, I'll see you guys next week. Peace.